Greeting Earthlings, if you follow the channel, you know that we are hard at work restoring the Apollo communication hardware. Over the last year and a half, you might have followed our steady progress. We achieved bidirectional lock of the microwave carriers way back in part 13. This is the backbone of the Apollo transmission link, on top of which a complex mix of signals, including ranging, voice, data and television is added using a complex modulation scheme. We have been busy ever since getting these various individual channels going. We transmitted up data in part 14, got television working in part 21, and central timing in part 25. But to have everything working simultaneously, we needed to bring up two key pieces of equipment, the pre-modulation processor or PMP on the spacecraft side and the interface simulator on the ground side. These two very complicated boxes are the linchpin of the modulation system. They are responsible for managing the many signals and subcarriers for transmission over the main microwave links. We got the PMP going in part 20 and the interface simulator in part 24. One more thing stood in our way before we could attempt to assemble the complete system. We needed a control panel. So we set out to reproduce a portion of the command module control panel in part 23, so we could control the complicated communication system, just like the astronauts did. We are now ready to begin assembly of the complete system. Okay, so we have reconfigured ourselves, we have put the interface simulator on top of the transmitter. So that our transmit station. Here we have the two receives, the PM and the FM. Uh, for the inputs we have void and we have the command data uplink box. And we have also the ranging. So we're getting fairly complete here on the transmit side. On the receive side we have now put the transponder in its rightest place in the transponder mount so we can make space for the control panel and eventually the PMP several days later you guys are hooking up yeah we did some tests on the control panel to make sure it's not doing anything bad with the voltages so far it looks good so we're gonna try it out yeah what would be the first experiment to do? What should I hook up as analog stuff into it, or or voice, or right? Once we no, have, you're 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 getting ahead of us. So <laughs> what do I do? moments later, so we're about to flip the switch on, uh, but we have to connect a little bit of stuff. We need it needs a reference five twelve kilohertz, and that will eventually come from the CTE, uh, and it also has a voice input it's a it, it's an a at 440 hertz and i'm monitoring the output of on pm on the spectrum analyzer so we should be able to see a few modes want to try it let's give it a shot with eight volts Okay, okay, so the PMP is turned off right now. I have to flip this switch to turn it on. Okay, I see nothing yet because I think I should not see anything. Okay, it ah, is 18 yeah. volts. I saw, uh, I see something, but I think it's fairly low. Voice is off right now. Yes, so I just a quick refresher from the previous episodes. On the way down, voice is on the green subcarrier at 1.25 MHz, and data is on the blue subcarrier at 1.024 MHz. So we are going to look for signs of the subcarriers and evidence of modulation on the spectrum analyzer as we exercise the various switches on our new control panel. Okay, so we're just looking at this point, and now if you turn voice on. Well, there's something there. Why is it off to the side like this? Uh-oh, this is not going according to plan. Turning voice on should produce a nice narrow subcarrier peak at 1.25 MHz. Instead I see a potato shaped signal around that frequency. I thought we had it clean before. I am perplexed. 
It's vaguely at 1.5, but I am not at 1. Point. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. That connection? Yeah. Oh, you're right. So, <laughs> okay, so it's our it's it's our homemade connector over here. All right. Easy. Okay, so now it's back. We're back. We have 1.25. We have voice. Um, Would you like to hook up the side wave? Yes. Let's get some voice going. One volt. All right. Yes, I see it now. So this is where the signal is. So if I do clear right, there we go. We have modulation. I turn voice off. That's correct. So key, if I go. Kilohertz. Stop. You know, hurts. Um, give me some key. All right. Just, just, just. Put you in key mode first. Okay. So here's key. And ooh, there's sure is key. All right. You can we can morse. So the Morse key mode is no joke. If the whole complicated modulation system had a failure, you could disable everything and revert to the most primitive form of radio communication, Morse code. The astronauts' Morse key was simply their push-to-talk button on their suit's cord. <laughs> it's a complicated animal. Yeah. And then I have, I have my own cheat sheet over here. <laughs> uh, so, so far we have exa exercise voice that works we have exercised key that works arranging i saw the increase in noise so it probably works and we did pcm when we had the the reference okay, right. so that worked too uh, and then we have down voice backup we check that all right, uh, next demo is to try to get to check the up voice, which we never did. The On the way up in the other direction, the subcarriers are at completely different and much lower frequencies. Up data is on 70 kilohertz and up voice is on 30 kilohertz, unless you are on backup mode and the two are switched. The PMP is able to demodulate voice all the way to baseband, so if all goes well, we may hear a tone for the first time. And uh, I just recreated a 30 kHz carrier, which I'm going to modulate. And it's at 30 kHz, and I have the modulation section over here, so I have to FM modulate it. And it works perfectly. And then we just check that the squelch was working so I'm below the squelch and if I put more amplitude it works so we have so they, they, they use that to turn off the, the, the noise okay we have that and then I can also check the 70 kilohertz by going to a voice so I'm going to switch to the backup mode which is 70 kilohertz carrier and then now voice and data have been switched which allows me to test the data so I, I, I go to up voice and there it is and on that one squelch shouldn't work yeah squelch shouldn't work makes sense yeah and now if I switch to data go to 30 kilohertz and it's squelched Okay, so we have the up pass working, we have the down pass working. Do, do, do you have a SC to aux? Yeah, that's right here. SC to aux, yeah, so in case, oh, <laughs> in case of emergency. Very we good. Put our PMP to aux as well. <laughs> oh, that's PMP to, yes, I should put it to aux. Yeah, yeah you can put PMP on aux. <laughs> oh yeah, so you can put <laughs> SC to normal, off, aux, mm -hmm. and PMP to normal, off, or aux. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They both have two power supplies. Yeah. Oh, very good. Excellent. 
So now we need to get it to the transponder and see if we can get it onto the carriers and get voice from the ground and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Later. All right, so Eric and Mike have been hard at getting the transponder hooked up to the PMP. So now we're going to try the grand transmission experiment. Okay, why don't we turn on the space ship transmitter? So you go make sure we have the PM1. Yeah, got it. All right, so we haven't broken things. So we are transmitting, and I think I'm going, just going to try to lock it. This one, and now we should have some frequency. We do 2.14. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I see I'm receiving it. So then I need to lock it. What is this? <laughs> And I go to 2.1064065. Next step is I lock myself on the way down. Woo, no, okay. Game control. I want to open the door. Thank you. And be able to tune myself. Maybe that's what I need to do. But I get no signal. Locked. All right. Okay, we are double locked. That took some effort. <laughs> Imagine they had to do that at every pass, right? Figuring mm -hmm. out what was going wrong. So what they did, they practiced on the test signal of the tower. All right. So next step, why don't we do TV? Make sure we still can do what we did before. So for a TV, I need the FM receiver to be on. Mike, you need to give me FM. I think we might need another cable. Right here. And yeah, I got it. It's it's right, it's having right all kind of issues here. It's going up, down, yes, no. There you go. Okay, we got we got FM. We should be able to get some video. And now we are going to have the real thing. We are going to have the TV go through the PMP, which we have never tested, by the way. Right. All right, we're connected back here. Oh. Is that the video? Yeah, we're getting video. Hey, yeah, yeah, we have video. Over here, I can see Mike. Hello. This is the minimum we wanted. We are Believe it or not, we are going to schlep that whole equipment to a uh, design con conference on Tuesday in two days. <laughs> and we wanted to have at least TV working. But now we should be able, I think, to get voice up and uh, simulate it. Power. Well, let's simplify this. Let's go just do this. Hello, 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 hello. Do you hear me over there? Yeah. Oh, it works? Yeah. I'm transmitting voice. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Oh, wow, it works. Yeah, right there. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, was, that, was, that was easy. Uh, I was expecting some switch settings to be wrong. I mean, yeah. so. Apollo 11, this is Houston. It works. <laughs> So I can add the data set side then. Data. Okay, this is voice and data. Uh, we don't have the data demodulation over here. We are missing the UDL box. Well, we have it, but it's not hooked up, which will probably be our next thing to do. Okay, so we're getting into bonus territory here. I'm trying to get the uh, CTE. Yeah, it's counting. So we have the mission time over there. Well, we will be able to get rid of all that uh, HP, uh, the 512 source and all the nannies. Okay, so this is number two of the extras we wanted to do. And number three, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm getting the uh, 
the Quinar tool is working, I'm almost there. So here while Mike and Eric were wiring up the PMP to the control panel and the transformer to the control panel, I was hard at work to shrinkify this. This is my yet to be tested uh, Quindar tone generator and the idea is to stuff it in this box. Um, but let's first see if this works. Hello, hello. Apollo, this is Houston. Okay, so that works and that should fit in there and then we can try it on the big setup. Okay, it sort of kind of works. Uh, bro, this is Houston. All right, with nearly a minute to spare, we have a setup ready for demo at DesignCon. DesignCon is a large Silicon Valley electronics conference with a focus on high-speed communications and signal integrity. Samtech, the company I work for, happens to sponsor the conference welcome reception and asked us if we'd be willing to exhibit our Apollo communication system during the evening of the reception. Oh my, count us in. So we took it all apart, 650 pounds of it, stuffed it in two vans and set it all back up in a hallway leading to the reception hall. Here is a time lapse of the installation. We're going to power up the beast again, which is a whole adventure. Uh, I mess it up every time, so here we go. It's complicated. Yes! I have a lot more signal here. Okay, give me PMP, what are you? Yet. Let's do the turn on by the way, it did turn on. Oh, one, two, six, four, six, two, five, or thereabouts. Let's try this. voice we have a little glitchy video we can't lock receive for some reason I had the same problem before oh we need mission time oh yeah <laughs> if we lift, lift it off we did eight minutes ago that one. Oh, so when you so the same thing happened you barely touched the switch and it locked Okay, so we have everything working at this very point. The voice, send me some voice. You can do the, the quid art, so if you want. I see. Right, so the voice works. I can hear data. We have television and we have locked PM on the other side, so everything is working. This is Houston, over. <laughs> no, no, this is Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's right. Mike even brought his newly acquired CDU for everyone to admire. It all worked great for the joy of the attending engineers. It also became plenty obvious how difficult the system is to exhibit as a working setup. For a permanent museum display, we'd have to simplify this by a factor of 10. But as long as we are around and have enough energy, we prove to ourselves that we can demo it as a live setup. See you in the next episode and maybe at the next exhibit.